Hey, so this is officially the start of season two of Bowtie. And in case if you want to see season one, I have that in a whole entire playlist, which you can see on my channel or in the link in the description. Now on with this beast of a video. Enjoy. For a while now, there was a game that many of us have heard before, at least once or twice, Poppy Playtime. And if you're like, I don't know, like f***ing three, and you don't know what Poppy Playtime is, it is a mascot horror game made back in 2021 and exploded in popularity the same year. Many people made Let's Play videos, reactions, and that one anime. But mostly, it was a hit. And now we're here, 2024. Chapter 3 was set to be the biggest chapter in Poppy Playtime, and now the long-awaited chapter that took almost about two years to release, and now, Chapter 3 is out. And as it currently stands at $15 on Steam, there was a lot in this chapter, and I gotta say, it was an experience. So, in today's video, I'll be talking about Chapter 3, and going over the story, gameplay, characters, then finally my overall thoughts and experiences with the game. Buckle and goobers, it's gonna be a long one. By the way, this section will be kinda confusing if you don't know the whole story of Poppy Playtime yet. I'll put a link in the description to a video of the story being explained. Okay, now with that out of the way, let's begin. After the train crash from Chapter 2, the players throw down a chute by catnap into a trash compactor. After escaping, the player makes their way through a series of maintenance tunnels, hearing a phone ringing in the distance in the process of escaping. Finding and answering the phone, the player finds themselves communicating with an unknown character who states his name to be Ollie. With this newfound phone, Ollie promises to guide the player while explaining the ongoing situation. The player returns to the train and proceeds to enter play character Elliot's Express, where they hear speech by Elliot Ludwig that introduces his ideologies and thoughts during the creation of Playcare. Upon arriving at Playcare, Ollie gives the player a key through the gas production zone, which is used to power the building but also produces a gas called the Red Smoke. After activating the console, the power goes out. Ollie tasks the player with reactivating the power and using backup generators from several locations to power the gas production zone to reach Catnap. Ollie then tells the player to enter Home Sweet Home first, which if you don't know what it is, it's an abandoned residence for all orphan children. After entering Home Sweet Home, the player finds some red smoke and accidentally inhales it, resulting in Catnap manipulating them into believing that they're so conscious while they could be seen unconscious in the real world. They make their way through a maze of seemingly endless corridors while also coming upon radio recordings that claim that a dead child had been found in Ellie Ludwig's estate. The player reaches the end of the corridors where they watch a tape welcoming employees to the Playtime Co. factory. The tape becomes more and more disturbing, beginning to call out the player specifically for returning and telling them of the incomprehensible horrors that now inhabit the factory. The player is forced to look at the screen until a distorted, twisted version of Huggy Wuggy crawls out of the television. The player tries to run away, but they are soon caught and eaten by the distorted Huggy Wuggy. Then the player wakes up in the real Home Sweet Home, discovering a gas mask soon after. After activating Home Sweet Home's generator and leaving, Kissy Missy makes an attempt to kill the player until she is stopped by Poppy. A remorseful Poppy explains to the player that they need to get rid of the monsters who tortured them. She explains that the prototype will kill the player if they try to escape and that he needs to be killed. Ollie tells the player to go to the school to restore the power to it. While trying to turn on the generator, the player encounters Miss Delight, the only remaining teacher of the school, who was abandoned by her co-workers due to their constant need for flesh to feast upon. Miss Delight continuously threatens the player through the school's PA system, and after they turn on the power, she damages the generator before chasing the player through various corridors and classrooms, only moving when they look away or when the lights turn off. As the player nears the school's maintenance exit, Miss Delight abandons her movement rule and charges at the player and kills the Okay, never mind, the player actually kills her. The player obtains a sick looking orange hand and makes her way through the caverns of Playcare. 
There, after completing several puzzles, they see Catnap worshipping a shrine of the prototype. Catnap doesn't notice the player, vanishing after they look away. The player then enters the playhouse through the caves where they fend off a horde of many smiling critters with the orange hand which works as a flare gun. On the player's way out, they encounter a locked up Dog Day, who explains the entirety of Playcare is Catnap's playground for destruction, murder, and general acts of violence. Dog Day also explains that Catnap takes orders from the prototype, worshipping him and killing anyone who doesn't listen to his god. Yeah, Catnap thinks the prototype is a god, who expected that? Shortly before his monologue ends, the many smiling critters infest Dog Day before hijacking his body and chasing the players through it. The player escapes the possessed Dog Day, last hearing his screams before taking a slide out of the playhouse. Ollie then sends the player to the council's office as their final objective, where they find and watch a tape of the warning issued to Playtime Co. employees on August 8, 1995, warning them of a hostile force and to evacuate. The player briefly returns to the caverns as they make their way through the counselor's office. As they enter a red smoke infested area while trying to power the building, the player is suddenly attacked by Catnap, who knocks the gas mask off of their face and sends them into a dream state where Poppy asks the player rhetorical questions with various visions of shadow children in play care. After rerouting the counselor's office back up power to the statue, Ollie gives the player the final battery required to power the gas production zone. They return to the zone, but Catnap ambushes them by filling the room with red smoke, chasing the player into an elevator. And Jesus Christ, he looks terrifying. The player enters the safe room and is required to fend off Catnap for three minutes as he constantly toys with the player's hallucinations. A green grab pack receiver eventually overcharges and the player utilizes this to eliminate Catnap at the hand's sacrifice. Catnap is electrocuted and lights himself on fire after exhaling the red smoke. The prototype's arm emerges from the ceiling, offering to assist Catnap before brutally shoving his hand in his mouth and taking his life. Returned to the gas production zone, the player uses the battery to power the console finally diverting the gas and powering the area. They then encounter Poppy, who shows them a tape containing CCTV footage of what happened to the player's co-workers. An incident the toys call the Hour of Joy. The tape shows Huggy Wuggy, Mommy Longlegs, Boxy Boo, Miss Delight, Catnap, and other toys under the prototype's control, as they viciously kill everyone present in the factory at the time. Poppy then explains that she had been thrown into a case the player found her in at the time, but she heard everything that happened and has since been distraught by the needless slaughter of so many lives, including those who were innocent on that day. Therefore, she has vowed to put an end to the prototype for what he has done. Poppy and the player take an elevator deeper into the factory, while Kissy Missy stays behind to activate it. As the elevator lowers to the ground, Kissy is attacked by an unknown entity, and Poppy turns the elevator around to save her, but the door concealing the elevator closes, stranding the player and Poppy in the deeper levels of the factory and leaving Kissy's fate uncertain. Oh, come on, go faster! So yeah, that was a whole f***ing load to take in. I know that was a lot to unpack in a single chapter, but this is Poppy Playtime, what do you expect? Anyways, now that we're done yapping about the story, let's talk about the gameplay. The gameplay this time around is really good, great even. And since we get different hands this chapter, such as the purple and orange hand, we could actually switch these hands. But there are only three options, the green hand, the purple hand, and the orange hand. I find this incredibly convenient since most of the chapter you do need to switch your hand to whatever the obstacle requires. I think this genuinely is a good way to not only introduce more mechanics for your grab pack, but also keeping your hands and you could just switch them with a quick of a button or a mouse. This is very good for the most part. Although it does take a little bit of time for the player to switch the hands, but overall it's very good. And speaking of obstacles, the obstacles this time around feel very different from the previous chapters. 
They feel more natural into the environment and make sense most of the time. Along with these obstacles, there are new puzzles to solve, such as this one. This kind of confused me for the first time since I didn't really understand it. And then when I did, it kind of seemed easy to use after that. But we can't get around this game without talking about the visuals. And I have to say, they actually cooked with the visuals this time. Now, the game looks way more realistic now. It makes the game slightly more scary. Also, on the note of scary, this chapter actually did make me feel a bit scared at some parts. For example, in the first nightmare sequence. It's where you come to a room and you hear a phone ring, where as soon as you pick it up, all he tells you to run, and as soon as you turn around to leave, Catnap is staring right at you and then turns around. Holy shit. This is actually scary. So yeah, the game is way more better than the chapters prior, and the gameplay is spectacular. Okay, now we're on to the characters. I feel like this time around, I think Mob Entertainment actually made the characters slightly more disturbing this time. First is Catnap. Catnap's monstrous form represents a feline creature cloaked in purple fur. Its eyes showcase black pupils encircled by white irises and has a cat-like nose. The creature's mouth can unhinge widely, and he has no teeth, forming an abyss-like void. This creature's monstrous paws have four digits, like a bear. Each of these paws are actually armed with sharp black claws and skinny, tall limbs that seemingly loosely stitch at the joints. The disproportionately small torso exposes the ribcage and the pelvic bone beneath the skin. Around its neck, a subtle melanoid black zipper runs along to a dull yellow crescent moon charm. Next is Dog Day. Dog Day is a canine characterized by an orange fur that complements his expressive black eyes, floppy ears, and sleek black nose. His features extend to a sunshine yellow outer mouth and belly, while a touch of golden brown graces his paws, ears, and the left side of his face. Just like Catnap and in line with the other smiling critters, Dog Day sports a wide, toothless grin while his inner mouth is shrouded in mysterious darkness. A distinct black zipper gracefully traces down his center, showcasing a captivating gold sun pendant surrounded by a radiant orange sun rays. He also has his legs missing in the game, and has a belt strapped to his waist so his organs won't fall out. Yeah, I know, the game got more darker than Huggy Wuggy getting hit by multiple pipes and falling to his death. Okay, this game has been dark since the beginning, actually, never mind. Next is Miss Delight, or the girl that went. Miss Delight has shimmering golden hair with a crimson bow tie pierced atop of her head. She wears a torn crimson skirt adorned with her playful polka dots and a vibrant tri color shirt of blue, red, and yellow with an apple symbol on it. A crimson tie could be seen on her office shirt. Her once smiling grin is now completely broken, exposing the flesh and teeth underneath. Part of her shirt is torn and dirty, which just likely occurred during the hour of joy. Alrighty, next one is probably the most terrifying of them all, Nightmare Huggy Wuggy. Huggy Wuggy's nightmare form is similar to the original Huggy's, but his face is now more skewed, his mouth has been enlarged, and the tops of his head are shaped into devilish horns. He is much taller with two black sockets in place of his eyes, and his upper teeth are longer. The rest of his body remains the same, but his hands and feet have now splayed fingers that represent claws. He also seems to lack the secondary jaws at the back of his mouth that the original Huggy had. Now we're on to our final character, or characters. And I have to be honest, I lied about something about the Nightmare Huggy Wuggy. He isn't the scariest one out of them all. These characters are so horrifying that they may even be scarier than this creature right here. What are they? Who are they? Could you say the damn name of them already? Well, get ready, as they are called Mini Critters. Okay, enough joking around about these little things. Let's go over them. The mini critters are all about two inches in size and height. 
Despite the size, they can leap up to the face of a fully grown human and attack. They resemble decaying and destroyed versions of their namesakes and possess the same wide gaping mouths. However, they have a bright white iris with pupils. There are multiple versions of the same smiling critters among these toys, such as Bobby Bear Hug, Bubba Bubba Fent, Crafty Corn, Dog Day, Hoppy Hopscotch, Kiggy Chicken, Piggy Piggy, and finally Catnap. These characters are much better and more intimidating, besides the smiling critters, than the characters before. I'm not gonna go over the other characters that appear in this chapter since they were already introduced prior to chapter 3, so there's no need to talk about them. With that all said and done, let's finally wrap up this video, Jesus Christ. So, I felt like chapter 3 was a major step up from the chapters prior to it, and it definitely delivered on some more interesting lore and well-cooked environments and characters. I think Mob Entertainment did an amazing job with this chapter. Although it did take almost 2 years to release, I think them taking time to make this chapter was a good choice and it worked. Now, let's start rating everything! I'd give the story a 8.5 out of 10, cause I really enjoyed the story but I felt like Catnap should have showed up a bit more because he kind of feels a bit absent throughout the chapter, but the boss fight does make up for it. Next is the environment. I'd give it a 9 out of 10, cause although the graphics, locations, and puzzles may be cool, but sometimes it does feel a bit weird, such as the caverns part. That felt out of place to put in a game that takes place in a toy factory, but it's pretty cool nonetheless. And the characters, I'd give it a solid 8 out of 10. Despite the characters being very much better, they do kind of suffer the basic characters element that most Masco horror games suffer. Although it is a Masco horror game, so it gets a pass on this. And now my overall rating, I give the whole game a 9.5 out of 10. So, this game was very epic and very amazing, but now we are heading closer to the end of this video. So I think it's a good time to credit a special someone. I like to credit my girlfriend, Rabies or Strawberry Shortcake. They're the one who redesigned my character, background, so I'd like to credit her for their amazing work on these redesigns. And also, I love you, Ray. And now we're at the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Please join my Discord, follow me on TikTok and Twitter, and tune in next time when I talk about... FNAF or something, I don't even know. I have been Bowtie, and I hope to see you guys next time.